All right, welcome along to Team 33's World Cup Final Preview. On my left, we have Kieran Bradley, who is the resident England fan, um, as we discovered last week. And then we've Ronan Mullen, who's done a couple of shows as well since. Uh, welcome along to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. And then we've the music aficionado, probably the person with the best <laughs> taste in music in the entire <laughs> news talk today, FM, 98 FM office, Steve O'Dole. Welcome along, your first ever Team 33. Thanks January. for having me, Ralph. Yeah. I'm honoured. Good. So, World Cup final, obviously, France and Croatia. Um, one of the big talking points, obviously, listening to John Giles during the week, it's probably going to swing on Pogba. Um, his perception, um, like, where do you stand on him, actually? Um, I have to say, I, I would have been a critic of Pogba myself. Um, it's funny, I remember uh, Euro 2012, I was actually over there working as a reporter for 98 FM, and I remember after the France game, when we played and they were coming through the tunnel yeah. uh, for the post-match stuff, and himself and Kante kind of came out at the same time. And Kante was all very prim and proper, had the tie suit, everything was done up nice and neat. And he was very uh, pleasant to everybody, very mannerly, kind of went to journalist by journalist, gave everybody a few words. Pogba kind of strolled in and he's kind of, you know, he's got the, he didn't know, he had no tie, the shirt was open up, he had a pair of uh, Nike Air Jordan, I think, with the, with the suit. And he's kind of slinking around, didn't really talk to many people. And at that time, they'd obviously both made their big moves to Chelsea yeah. and Manchester United. I'm kind of thinking, you know, if I'm looking at these two players, I think even just by this perception, I think I know which player I want, want on my team, you know. Yeah. And it's just interesting, I suppose, because of the two of them are teammates. But maybe that's what makes them so special as a combination because they are so different. Yeah. And I think they're two kind of players that you need in your team. You know, you need that bit of flair in midfield that Pogba has, but you also need that kind of discipline the water that Kante carrier. brings to the side. Yeah, a bit what, like his manager, Deschamps. Yeah, yeah. Idea, yeah. So, but I have to say, as I would be a critic of Pogba, but I really thought the other night against Bel Belgium, he was excellent. I yeah. thought he was really good. He's able to spray those passes, 30, 40 yard passes in any direction. But I thought he was very disciplined in his performance, which is something we haven't seen from Pogba an awful mm. lot, either with France or Manchester United. But, yeah. you know, I think they need that from him in the final on Sunday. Do you think pundits are harsh, both he on Pogba generally? Or, like, I would kind of agree with them up to a point, but maybe sometimes there are certain pundits that kind of have it in for him. And yeah. it kind of falls in between. Yeah, occasionally I think the, the, the freight train kind of runs away a little bit uh, from certain pundits. They kind of feel like they back themselves into a corner. Yeah. Like the likes of Sunus obviously had the knives out for him fairly early on. And, and in, in fairness to him, they kind of get, they, he gave him fairly grudging uh, praise the other night after, after Belgium too. But look, uh, Pogba can be his own worst enemy. Like he has all of the attributes to be the best midfield player in the world. The world of course, um, yeah. But, you know, look, I mean, he drifts in and out of games. I mean, we've seen it for Manchester United a, a lot of the time. And I, I love that uh, that dovetailing of, of Kante and Pogba, that, that idea of, of Kante being all business in his suit and Pogba adding <laughs> a little bit of flair. It, it, it's a lovely... Uh, 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 Kante drive a little mini or something, I think, is the Yeah, yeah <laughs> something yeah. like that, yeah. I don't know what Pogba drives, but... Uh, it's very 60s London. Uh, I would have thought maybe a Peugeot or a Citroën, maybe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but a little car, anyway, yeah. But your point, anyway. Yeah, no, so I, I, I just think, um, yeah, occasionally the pundits can get a little bit over the top but by the same token that, that when you have such a high ceiling of talent you should be holding yourself to a higher standard yeah. and uh, granted he's he's fitted into the system that um, that Deschamps decided on and probably decided on fairly late as well because I mean even going into the tournament there was a lot of talk of how they play yeah. um, so it, it's it's nice that he has that base there and I, I, I really hope he does well in the final um, but I don't know. I just I, I'd like to see him have the own internal self discipline to really start delivering this on a regular basis. And Ronan, uh, on the same point, but also maybe, do you think it'll change? Like, say he has a stormer in the World Cup final, scores a goal, maybe the winner or something, just plays brilliantly, outplays Modric. Do you think that changes the narrative? Yeah, exactly. Because like even his foremost begrudgers would admit, like on a technical level, in terms of with the ball and athleticism, he's peerless almost in world football. It's definitely a concentration stroke mentality issue. He definitely wrote, like brought his game to another level against Belgium. It's like against Watford away or against like Brighton at home. He's not going to be able to get to that, you know, peak performance and that's where the likes of like great midfield players in the past have been able to produce it on a weekly basis. I have no doubt in my mind Pogba could go out and play Modric on Sunday, but whether he can deliver that kind of performance week in week out remains to be seen, you know. I yeah. think as well that you know, with a player like that and maybe it's the reason he hasn't worked at Manchester United as well is because Mourinho is such a disciplinarian or such an authoritarian. Yeah. Like he needs to be in charge. He needs to run the rule over all of his players. And I don't think Pogba's a player that reacts well to that. I think you need to have 
if you're going to be, you know, if you want to know how to treat Pogba well, I think it's just to give him, give him that little bit of leeway to do his own thing. Don't yeah. be so harsh on him and don't try and run the rule over him. You kind of need to give him that little bit of freedom and he probably reacts better to a manager like that. Yeah. And I think Deschamps maybe does that with him, like kind of says, look, maybe he wants him to kind of do that bit of defensive work, but also gives him that bit of freedom as well to kind of do what he wants as, yeah. as well. Yeah, you know? Matuidi and Kante, they keep the doors locked at the yeah. back and anything Pogba does in a defensive uh, side of things is a bonus whereas at Manchester United he's expected to be all things to all people mm. score at one end be Roy Keane basically in the 90s but he's never going to be that kind of player he's he's a luxury player in some respects although he has the capability to do what he did against Belgium and be an all-rounder you know yeah I think, I think there's a fair point to be made about um, the kind of attacking unit in front of Pogba in this France team because I think yeah. it's a lot more functional than, than what he has yeah. in United at the moment uh, there's been a lot obviously talked about Manchester United in terms of the, uh, the Sanchez situation but also the way the likes of Rashford and Martial are fitting in as they go so I think once that's settled you'll probably see a little bit more kind of coherence from Pogba's play um, but I, I would go back to Steve's point that like I really do feel that the, the way that you manage him is really important and uh, you know I I, I'm not sure Mourinho is possibly going to get the best out of him at the moment. Yeah, now we're going to decide player of the tournament on Monday, or well, when we record early, because the show is, of course, live all the time when it goes out on Tuesday, um, with Joe Coffey, Derek Ryan, Killian Woods, whoever's here. But Modric, for me, he should win the Ballon d'Or if he wins the World Cup. That's my kind of belief. I don't know if there's agreement in here or if I'm just sailing the ship by myself. I think so. Like, you know, he, he's with Real Madrid, they get to a Champions League final, yeah. win, win their third one in a row. Like, he's just had an incredible year. and. I did actually tweet during, I think it was during the Argentina game. Follow um, at Dub Soul Rebel if you're <laughs> on Twitter. But I do think I, I, I kind of said, like, I could watch this guy playing all night and I think he's underappreciated. Now, a few people came back kind of saying to me that, or in agreement, but there were people who said, well, he totally is appreciated. I, I don't know. I think mm. up until this year, I think people did respect him and, and give him credit, but I really don't think he got the, the level was, of was praise Kroos he should. Getting, was Cross getting more kind of respect? Uh, Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either of them will really get. I, I think that there's a tendency in in that Madrid side and that Madrid kind of setup for central midfielders to be looked over a little bit because yeah. there's not so much because the the forwards are so fantastic, but just the the, the, the kind of attitude towards that team. And I think um, Modric particularly has just been the the correlation between his presence in Madrid and their their trophy haul over the last few years is just is it, there's no coincidence. Um, I personally just come back to the point of of who you would like to see um, win, uh, well, potentially whether win he would be there. For Ballon Ballon Award, yeah. yeah, no, it's a, it's a point that I've only thought about since you mentioned it earlier, but um, it's just that kind of wily guile, that complete um, assuredness in his own ability, like mm. the other night against England where he was just like, this is men against boys and I'm the man here, and mm. it was just, it was it was phenomenal to watch, and I think he's just outstanding, the, the outstanding central Yeah, field. I don't, do you remember much from his time at Tottenham? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, you know, I think if Tottenham had decided to keep him and maybe build a side around him for the next few years, yeah. I think they might have had a lot more success. Yeah. You know, because he is, you know, when you think of some of the attacking players that they have there now, can you imagine them playing with, with him Modric firing now, bullets, Harry yeah, Kane, yeah. especially like Harry Kane running onto uh, Modric, Modric balls all day? Ball, like yeah. he, he, he'd be, they would be lethal together, I think. Yeah, and probably it's maybe a message for Pogba in a sense because he's only 24, so Modric is, I think, 31 at the moment. So if you take that seven years of maturation where you do learn to control the game, maybe that is something he might develop into. Yeah, the issue with Modric, I suppose, at Real Madrid is on that Mount Rushmore team. He doesn't really fit the Galactico profile. He yeah, just actually, quite I saw Frankie Boyle tweeted uh, during the week, uh, I think it was just after or before the England semi-final, but it, uh, Pickford, it's almost like a boy who's going to meet uh, like this elf in some uh, children's movie or something. That's what the two of them looked yeah. like beside each other. <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't, he doesn't fit that Galactico profile that Florentino Perez obviously. Yeah. So he's not going to get the endorsement deals and stuff, which is probably why he's not front and centre as much, but he's won four Champions Leagues. He's been in the yeah. heartbeat of all those teams. I think and like Messi as well, it's, it's another... In the, you know, I suppose it's another victory for small players. Yeah. You know, but, mm. you know, people have this idea you need to be kind of a big, mm -hmm. you know, physically strong uh, athlete to be a good footballer. But Modric and, and Messi defy those kind of mm. Griezmann, I suppose, another one as well. But yeah. like in the Croatia team, he's basically him and Rakitic. Although Rakitic is like almost a complementary player to Modric, I don't think he actually imposes himself on the game as much as Modric does. Mm. But Modric is basically the rising tide that makes some. Uh, borderline average players in that Croatia team mm. better and like he basically took them by the scruff of the neck against England took them over the line even though he probably struggling with injury like most of his compatriots there 
Yeah, I suppose the final point, Steve, we'll start with yourself. Uh, what's your prediction and where is the winning and losing of this game? Um, well, I suppose you do. You have to look at the, the midfields um, on both sides, but as well, and I did a piece before um, the, the match between France and Uruguay just talking about defence. On offball.com, yeah. On offball.com. Yeah. And I think if you, you look back at all the winners of World Cups over the last kind of five or six tournaments, they've all had really good defences. Mm-hmm. And look at the France team in 98, Italy in 06, um, the Spain team in 2010, they all conceded two goals in the whole tournament. Yeah. Um, and now, obviously, France, Argentina, I think, was a bit. Uh, I, I don't know what you, what you could say about that game I think France were a little bit unlucky in the way they conceded a couple of those goals but other than that they've been fantastically strong at the yeah. back Varane and Antidi I have to admit I had doubts about them going into the tournament I think they've really risen to the level you look at Pavard as well who I know there was a lot of questions over the French full backs going into this French journalists were wondering did they have strong enough full backs Pavard who would normally yeah. play centre half with Stuttgart I think Stuttgart. Was Mendy actually I think seemed to be the, mm. the expectation rather yeah, than yeah. these two who have come Definitely. in and there was even calls goal. for Debussy to be, to be called up who's, he'd been playing well at club level yeah. but I think the way Pavard has performed has been incredible you know a guy he's usually used to playing a centre half he's played right back a handful of times for his club but he's been excellent and you've got that little bit of you know that little bit of nastiness and bite on the other side with Hernandez you know yeah. I think their back four has been tremendous Hugo Lloris I'd have my doubts about still I think if Croatia can get a few long range shots at him and test him out early in that game you know test his nerve which I, you know if you get Hugo Lloris maybe doubting himself early in that game that could definitely help Croatia but I just look you know I do think that we, we wonder where all this energy is coming from with Croatia like they've played three matches extra time penalties in two of those games you know that the well's going to run dry eventually, and well, unless they keep eating their Weetabix. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just think, uh, like, my heart is saying Croatia. I'd love Croatia to win this tournament yeah. just for the size of the country, what the country has gone through, the They'll history. They'll never be here again, probably. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I just think there's something about that French French side that they just do enough to win, don't they? And I, I just think they might edge this one by a goal. Yeah, Kieran, how about you? Yeah, I think, uh, I know it sounds a little bit obvious, but I think if, if Kylian, ba- Kylian Mbappe plays to the level that we know he can, then he's going to seriously cause problems for, yeah. uh, you know, for Lovren and potentially Chaluka, depending on who starts. But I... I, I you know, I know it's talked a lot about in the run up to the England match, but the the, the physical element now is is really going to start to bite home for for Croatia. I think um, was that their their third game on the trot that they've yeah, had extra, extra time, time? Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of that was um, you know when you're kind of running on empty, the, the the things that were being said in the English press would have been in like in the, in the heads of Modric, Rakitic, and the yeah. like, Lovren particularly, to just sort of push you over the line. And I wonder whether that's just that's where the adrenaline peaks a little bit and then you, you know you're going to see a slight drop off from the likes of yeah. Rosalco and, and these players are going to, are going to drop too and um, Steve I made the point about the, the wing backs for France as well I think it'll be interesting uh, just uh, in terms of the attacking line for Croatia generally what, what state Mandzukic is in because he looked as if he'd taken a really heavy knock uh, yeah. against Pickford the other night and he's so crucial for, for the way they play and um, I, I, I think that those that the full backs can still be got at and um, but I, my heart is, is still definitely saying France. I, I just feel that um, Mbappe can really bully those players and you've got Griezmann with that kind of bit of guy and, and directness behind. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't really look past them. I'm going to say, I actually think it's going to be fairly comfortable. I think it might be like 3-0, 3-1. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Another yeah. World yeah. Cup final sure. like that. Since no, I know. I, and as I say, look, it, it, it may well be an awful prediction, but, um, but I just kind of see... That they have so much and they, they've kind of settled on a system that seems to work for them. So. Yeah, well, all predictions are awful until you get it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ronan, you're, you have the casting vote now. Yeah. Obviously, it's won already because these two have gone fans already. <laughs> I, can, I can only really echo what the lads have said there. I can't remember a World Cup final where it's been markedly stacked in one team's favour more than this because Croatia have played the maximum amount of minutes, as the lads have said there, and not since Uruguay in 1950 has a country with such a small population reached a World Cup final. France have been, it's not quite a golden generation because they always seem to have a golden generation, but Mm. this group of players, if all else is equal in the balance of play on Sunday, they seem to have the quality in individual areas that will get them over the line. I'd say they'll win by two goals. Well, we'll see what happens. Ronan, Kieran, Steve-O, thanks for coming in. We'll be back on Tuesday.